Nobody understands cricket. You gotta know what a crumpet is to understand cricket. Here's a look at the new NECA toys, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie series, Raphael. Now you can catch America's favorite green teens in their first live action blockbuster film. After waiting in a puddle of radioactive waste, these radical reptiles are transformed into New York City's greatest crime-fighting quartets. Raphael's a skilled, psi-wielding ninja. Beware, though, when he gets angry, you don't want to be around. This highly detailed action figure stands 6.5 inches tall and features 30 points of articulation, including double elbows, double knees, to fully showcase Raphael's ability to battle it out. We're going to go ahead and start this review off by getting Raphael's measurements. And just FYI, despite what partners in crime will tell you, Raphael is not, he is not the leader of the group. Transformed from the norm by the radio goop, just no, it's Leonardo. That was still bothers me to this day. Nonetheless, nonetheless, you're looking at a figure that stands 6.4 inches in height, which in centimeters works out to be 16.3 centimeters tall. No, no, not leader of the group. Speaking of leader of the group, though, there is Leonardo and also Donatello. All the figures that we've looked at just this far. Still have to look at Michelangelo, of course, and then the quartet will be complete. As you can see with the three turtles, all of them share the exact same body. Now, really, other than the strap that's on the front, the belt harness or whatever, really, whatever you would want to call it, they are, of course, different from one another. Donatello is a little bit higher. Raphael, of course, doesn't have the shoulder strap, and Leo does have one, actually times two. Other than that, though, and other than a few freckle replacements and moving it around on the bodies, the bodies are identical to one another. Like with the other turtles, we'll start this review as well with having a look at the accessories. Number one, slice of pizza. And it does seem to be, again, we bring in the other ones here, there is another slice of the pizza pie. Possibly, yes, would be the statement you should probably be making that they are identical to one another. And without dropping them, let's grab the other one. There you go. It does look like they are the same slice of pizza. Well, not the same slice of pizza, but you, you know what I mean. Same sculpt, same paint, same section where some extra marinara sauce might be actually coming out from the ends of the pizza. So again, I love the fact that they include these. Michelangelo, I always seem to be more thinking of the pizza gobbler. I'm probably going to be likely displaying him with a pizza slice in his mouth. Stay tuned for that. Also included, he comes with a pair of interchangeable hands. And uh, some of these hands I don't think have made appearances before. Let's grab, let's grab Donnie's hands, which were like kind of pointing hands. And also then further to compare it to, there was the high five cowabunga hand that came included with Leo. One quick thing I want to talk about, not so much necessarily Raphael's hands, but it might be something that's across the board on all of these. When I finished up my review of Donatello, I couldn't help but notice it was obviously right off the bat. As soon as I took the hand out of the socket, the more harder plastic, the peg stayed in the socketed area of the forearm. Now, unfortunately, the culprit is that the hands are very soft plastic. The peg, though, is a very hard plastic, so unless you're being extremely careful, if you abruptly pull this out, you might find yourself in a similar circumstance as myself, where you've got the, like, the peg left behind in the socket. Now, this is a fix, simple enough, but I thought the need to mention it in this review, just to kind of FYI. I'm all about giving you guys FYI, as much information as I can convey behind the camera to you guys that are watching this behind your monitors. Well, in front of your monitors. A simply case would just be to pry this open and uh, take the one side, the other side is completely sealed, take the one side and just plunk it back down. If you can't get this right off the bat with prying this open, you may also go the route of heating this, putting this in some boiling water, for example, just to soften it a little bit more, pinch it back together once the peg is in place, and hopefully it's not going to go anywhere. But again, I felt a service that I need to be providing for you guys to kind of give you FYIs on all this sort of stuff. As we were talking, 
I got sidetracked, of course, talking about hands. We'll go back to the hands. Like I said, he does come with a pair of sort of gripping hands, which I guess could be easily swapped out, mixed and matched all over the place, round and round and upside down, mixing and matching it with the various different turtles. Now, one thing you can also do as well, is I happen to notice that these hands are perfect if you want to hold the size like this, kind of at the, at the end of the movie where they have to surrender over their weapons to the shredder. You could probably do the exact same thing or just kind of have it in such a way that Raphael's holding the size not plural size, but the size in his hands, both of them, and you could display it like this. So just kind of one thing that you could do with these. Let's move those uh, right along. And uh, having a look at the size, which does not have an S on the end of it, the size are very nicely painted. It looks as if probably they were cast in brown plastic with the tips of the size painted in silver. Now, one thing that's good about the size saying that quite frequently already, is that you can tuck it, much like in the movie, you can tuck it into the little front, not quite holstered areas, but certainly the opened areas of his belt here. And you just drape them either side, as you can see right there, either side can be either side, and you can slide those into the grooves. I'm here all night. Nice detailing, by the way. Love these little scratches and little notations that they put onto the belt itself. You've got a little couple of rivet points there as well. Uh, but like I said, a, guy, a good place, a nice little place where you can store the Psy if you want to display it with Raph and not necessarily on Raph. Well, you know, you know what I mean. If you want to display it, however, in his hands, just simply a case of making sure you don't apply any pressure to the side or the top of the Psy, but rather on the side of the Psy. I promise I won't say it much more anymore after this. And then you can see it fits into his hand. And I guess you could also, you can't quite get it in between his his middle two fingers, there's not enough of a gap happening right there. Maybe Michelangelo will come with those included hands. Um, I guess one of the other options is you could take one of take one of these hands and sort of, not quite, the thumb sort of gets in the way of it. I guess you could, yeah, there you go. You could get it in one of those hands as well. So a couple of different options, a couple of different ways. There you go, that, I do. I like the look of that. You can display it with the size in between the fingers as well. So there you go. The other included accessory, all of which have also made reappearances with every single turtle that we've had a look at, is the alternating on the other side bandana. As you can see currently, the bandana is draped on this side of Raphael's shoulder. This, I guess, would be your left side, right? Left side looking at it. If you want to have it, though, on the opposing side, twirling it around doesn't really cut it. Certainly does not slice it. So what you can also do, too, is take the alternate headband. I love the fact that NECA includes these. Wiggle this off. Wiggle this off. Pop this out of the ball area. Ball socket area. And then just plug. Just revisit where you left off. If you're not that far from home, you'll remember where you had to go back to. Just plug that into place. Focus if you can, camera. There you go and uh, it will drape now on the opposite side. I guess purists will be looking at the source material and saying, okay, in this scene, Raphael's got the, the side of the bandana on this side. Okay, so if I'm gonna recreate this scene, I gotta make sure it's on this side. So thank goodness that NECA did give you the options that you can either have it on the left or you can have it on the right. You can't have it on both, because that would be, I don't know where he has these extra straps from but you can go either way. You can go back and forth, back and forth. Or what you can also do too, as I've already mentioned as well, if you have a little bit of wind, whoosh, imagination wind, you can have the uh, the ends of the bandana as if they're kind of blowing back. So a little bit of fun you can have with that. As for the figure itself, what more again can I say about these other than sheer perfection? forfeiting an opportunity to grab the Raphael and for the furthermore as well Donatello never got them in the quarter scale I got the Michelangelo and I got the Leonardo and I know there was also of course the dressed up uh, concealed if you will Raphael that was also available in a quarter scale format as well I just never got around to reviewing those thank goodness I waited as I did as certainly We've got ourselves now six and a half inch versions, renditions of the Turtle Brothers. Now, I can only hope as we follow suit, as we certainly have already gotten ourselves a casually or concealed, dressed up, whatever you would want to call it, 
inconspicuous Raphael, of course, with the fedora and the trench coat. Maybe we'll eventually see that one also being released. I can almost even see it being released as a Comic-Con exclusive or a convention exclusive. That is probably usually, they're usually good for, you know, releasing those things as convention exclusives. Anyways, I am going to grab, I'm going to grab Donatello just for these comparisons here. As you can see, side by side, they're pretty much, again, identical to one another. Paint does change a little bit. The freckle placement also does change a little bit from turtle to turtle. As you can see, he's got four spots down here. Raphael's got kind of an inverted triangle uh, series of dots. Where the big change happens, though, is when you look on the back of the shells. And though the shells seem similar enough, actually, between Donatello and Raphael, they're the closest they seem. Uh, you can see the very apparent scratches and indentations of damage that happened occurred to Raphael's uh, back shell there. Something else also as well, as you can see, the back tortoise shell, I keep wanting to say tortoise, do apologize for that, the turtle shell is about the same gap space, as you can see, from this shell to this shell right here. It's about the same. Whereas, loving doing these comparisons, by the way. As you can see, though, if you look at Leo's, Leo's actually has the closest back shell to his, uh, to his torso area here. Now, when we look at possibly, I say possibly, you know we will. When we look at Michelangelo, quite possibly, he might actually mimic the body, possibly reusing the body for uh, Leonardo, and then Raphael would be sharing the same body, even right down to the, the separation of the back of the shell, be sharing the exact same body with Donatello. So they probably got essentially sort of the same limbs, the same arms, but like the shell placement would dictate that these are almost mold brothers to one another. Quite possibly then, Leonardo will be a mold brother to, of course, Michelangelo. So we'll move, once again, Donatello out of the way. It was really more so just to kind of show you guys that there are similarities, but then again, paint is really what dictates the change of pace when it comes to each of these individual brothers. Raphael, again, looks splendid. As splendid is not probably the coolest of words to be using to describing a turtle figure, but it certainly is a sight to be seen. Slightly a little bit fuller in the face is Raphael. Um, quite the contrast to, of course, the thinner profile for Leonardo and the more front top jaw or duck bill that uh, Donatello is more so known for. Now, some people did cry foul, or in this case, cry turtle when it was announced that we were finally going to be getting a six and a half inch rendition of the already released quarter scale turtles that we had gotten before. Many people felt that NECA was double dipping intentionally, and I really don't think that was the case at all. Oftentimes, companies will have to go a route just to avoid licensing conflict with another company that may already have that license. In the case of the Turtles, as we've already seen with the Target exclusive cartoon Turtles, those were apparently only available and only agreed upon, from what I heard, with Playmates under the assumption that it wasn't going to be displayed in the toy aisle and it was going to be displayed elsewhere and it was exclusive to only one brick and mortar store. Case in point also here, the case with the GameStop exclusive Turtles. There's a reasoning why NECA Toys doesn't circulate these to every store. It's not the fact that they're trying to make these rare and hard to come by, because really at the end of the day, they want to be able to sell these toys. The idea of keeping these solely to the scalpers for, for the really the ones that are able to profit the most from that doesn't make any sense for a company to make them exclusive unless that was the way that they were able to finally release these. Playmates still has a hold on the Turtles property, so NECA has been doing the best that they can to get around that to give collectors really what they've been asking for for years. Quarter Scale was kind of their entryway into that, and now GameStop is also the way that they're able to release the 6.5 inch. People, I think, have to realize that. The NECA aren't deliberately doing the things that they're doing. A lot of times, again, they have to get around the legalities and the way that the, the licensing works with other companies. And that's probably one of the reasons why you can only get these ones currently at GameStops. Uh, looking forward, though, speaking of exclusives, but maybe exclusively making it still to GameStop, I hope one day we'll still find ourselves seeing a 6.5-inch Shredder, a 6.5-inch Foot Soldier, both of which are still slated for a quarter-scale release, and future releases, like I said, maybe a 6.5-inch April, 
a six and a half inch splinter, and most definitely a six and a half inch Casey Jones, a very pitting foil for Raphael here at the beginning of the film. Either way, like I said, if you guys are interested in picking these ones up for yourself, they are a bit scarce, even scarcer than the cartoon turtles. And again, your only way to get them is either pre-order them if you got the pre-order when you had the chance, or still check your local game stops. Don't, whatever you do, put money into the pocket of the scalpers who really don't deserve it for the prices that they charge for these things. Try to buy them at the very least from at retail prices and buy them from retail locations. Today, once again, we are having a look at the new Movie Turtles 6.5 inch line from the folks over at NECA Toys. This was Raphael, a fantastic looking figure. Pretty consistently fantastic to the already fantastically looked at Leonardo and Donatello. We're still going to fantastically look at a fantastic, I know I'm just making up words, a fantastic Michelangelo. He's slated for the next review, just FYI. Make sure if you haven't done so already, it would be fantastic if you could hit that little subscribe button down below. And if you watch to the very end of this video, thank you, by the way, for doing that. More videos, including the review of Michelangelo, right around the corner, so stay tuned for that. And thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you guys next time.